A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's Thursday, the 18th of January, 2024. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Akkaji. Another very wonderful day, a new opportunity to begin anew. If there is something that you've had as a challenge, this is the time you've been given this opportunity to do better uh, by humanity, do better by yourself, do better by the society that you find yourself. It is just a good day. Yes, a very good day, very bright good. and sunny, and we're ready um, to give you everything that you need this morning. So we're going to be looking at what the national dailies are saying, as well as two, as well as two hot topics. But we're also going to look at some top trending stories this yeah, morning. And then we are going to also take something from the press, on of the press, uh, that from what our national dailies are saying. Did you say that yeah, already? Yeah, I already said that. Okay, okay. <laughs> where is my head this morning? Mm -hmm. uh, but we're going to quickly just look at the top trending issues right now, and then uh, we take a break and go to the papers. All right, so our first top trending story this morning says, reps reiterate commitment to pass and bill on state police. Um, well, that's one of our top trending. Our second top trending is court stops NBC from imposing fines on broadcast. Yeah. Stations, right? Rather uh, hot topics. Those are hot, hot topics. Hot topics. <laughs> okay, for the uh, top trending issues, the first one is talking about. Uh, uh, the first one is on INEC. It publishes final candidates list for February by election. The Independent National Electoral Commission has published the final list of candidates for the February 3, 2024 by election in Nigeria. In a statement on Wednesday, INEC National Commissioner Sam Olumekun said the by-elections became necessary because of death or resignation of members of the National and State Houses of Assembly. These elections will be held across the nine states of the Federation, covering two senatorial districts, that is, Ebony South and Yobe East, four federal constituencies that are Shanga, Ngaski, Yauri, federal constituency of Kebi State, Surulere, one federal constituency of Lagos State, Akoko North East, Akoko North West, federal constituency of Ondo State, and Jalingo, Yoro, Zing, federal constituency of Taraba State, and three state constituency, Guma, one state constituency of Benue State, Chibok State constituency of Borno State, and Chikun State constituency of Kaduna State. The commissioner said the timetable and schedule of activities uh, the personal, personal particulars and final list of candidates have been published in INEC state offices and the affected constituencies pursuant to the provision of Section 29 Sub 3 of the Electoral Act 2022. And the list of candidates is published on the INEC website and social media platforms. He appealed to Nigerians to scrutinize the personnel particulars that is from EC9 and academic credentials of the candidates. He asked that any aspirant who participated in his or her party primaries with reasonable grounds to believe that the information provided by the candidates is false can challenge the nomination in a federal high court as provided in Section 29, Subsection 5 of the, federal, of the Electoral Act 2022. The rerun elections are conducted pursuant to the orders of the election petition appeal tribunals. I, I think we've had enough information already. Yeah. The, the thing is, we should never give room for that. Uh, the case where you'll go to court later on and they say that was a pre-election matter. Mm -hmm. This was this on grounds of technicalities. Do the needful now before it gets to February. Yeah, so important. that we don't keep having those court cases mm -hmm. over and over and over again because it seems like with every election, mm -hmm. everyone is, you go know that court. phrase, go, go to court. To court. <laughs> Go, go to, to court. court, that's the phrase. So let's just try and, you know, just make mm. sure that we do everything we need to do now, um, have a free and fair election, and, you know, the, the, the people that um, everyone wants, the citizen wants, you know, mm. should, just, should just win and we're all good. Mm -hmm. Let's start by changing uh, the way we, we select the selection process of our, the people Leaders. that superintend over us after the election. Mm. Okay. All right, so our next top trending story, we have federal government sets up committee to review laws on explosives. Um, the Federal Executive Council on Wednesday said it has set up a committee to review the laws guiding the control of explosives in the country. This is coming after the devastating explosion that rocked the ancient city of Ibado, the Oyo state capital, on Tuesday night. The committee would determine whether these were violated by the illegal miners identified in the pre preliminary like your pardon, investigations by security agencies. 
the Minister of Defense, Mohammed Abu Bakr, told State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting on Wednesday. The council, presided over by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu at the Asorok Villa Abuja, expressed worries about the incident, noting the need to avert future occurrences. At least two persons were confirmed dead, well now three, and over 80 were injured in the explosion, also which destroyed several buildings, vehicles and other properties. The Oyo State Governor, Shei Makinde, who visited the scene of the explosion, confirmed the casualties, adding that the explosion occurred at Adeyi Avenue, Bodija. However, settlers say the blast was heard, was heard and felt kilometers away in many parts of the city. Makinde said preliminary investigations by security agencies revealed that the blast was triggered by illegal miners occupying one of the houses in Bodija. Abu Bakr said despite the preliminary investigations linking the incident to explosives stored by the illegal miners, the authorities are not ruling out a gas um, possible cause. However, federal agents are on the ground to ascertain the proximate and remote causes of the incident. Fielding questions on the issue, he said, the first question has to do with the Ibadan explosion, where the governor said the preliminary investigation suggested that there are some explosives around the area where it happened and that they are owned by some illegal miners. The minister said the committee was to set up to review the laws guiding the control of explosives, to see where the chain is broken and see how it can be fixed and gather more information if this is happening rampantly around the country. Earlier, President Bolatinubu called on relevant government agencies to fish out and punish those responsible for what he called a reckless behavior that triggered the blast. He expressed sadness over the incident, which he described as worrisome. In a statement signed by Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Ajir Ingilili, the president said it is worrisome that the cause of the blast is being attributed to activities of illegal miner. I mean, um, all of our condolences go to the families or the people who were involved with this um, very sad incident. Um, about on Tuesday night, I heard about the blast. In fact, on social media as well, I saw videos of people's reactions um, when the blast was happening. So you're seeing, you know, youngsters on TikTok, they're, they're doing their videos, and then all of a sudden you're hearing yeah. this, this huge blast. And now, as of this morning, we, we, we heard that about three lives, initially our report said two, but as of this morning we're seeing that about three lives were lost, and our condolences, our hearts, um, goes to the families of, of these people and even the people that are injured as well. It is quite, it's quite sad. And I mean, this committee is quite important because you can't just have explosives, you know, lying around. There are people's lives, you know, at stake for this as well. All right. I, I don't know whether there is, we like forming committees all the time. Committee, this committee, that. Are there no laws against explosives? Uh, illegal they are using the word illegal. illegal whatever is illegal there's a law against that yeah. why not look into how this can be enforced even more you're, you're you're setting up a committee to review the laws the laws are good enough these people were doing illegal uh, mining and the people around there knew about it or i don't know maybe they thought they knew about it because mm -hmm. sometimes you across someone and they tell you that we have the relevant papers they show you a government official has actually given them some papers mm. that will authorize them to do what they are doing so there are no checks enough checks uh, for this uh, enforcement of these laws so why not look into that you're setting up committees that will take a lot of money to mm -hmm. sit and uh, deliberate on things that we already know the laws are there make them be enforced that's yeah. what I now lives have been lost. We don't even know if it's just three. Yeah. As at this moment, they're still looking at the rubble to see whether there are there's some people, people under there. Yeah. There's a possibility that there may be another person. There may also be another person that was not in the rubble, but has died of heart attack somewhere. Yeah, will got will we know? Yeah. Uh -huh. it's a the ripple effect. So it's not just yeah. The, the explosion. So not just the three people. It has had a very very like you call it a ripple effect on a lot of people that may not even be accounted for. Yeah. So let the laws be enforced. As simple as that. I agree. Everyone well, um, another one is, uh, as part of measures to tackle the menace of insecurity in the nation's capital, Abuja, we're talking about illegal settlements, um, uh, the Federal Capital Territory Administration, FCTA, has begun the audit of illegal settlements and shanties across the territory with a view to pulling them down.
Consequently, the Department of Development Control in the FCT administration has directed its field officers across the entire territory to submit a list of shanties and informal settlements for a verification exercise. The directive came as it emerged that the bandits again invaded Garam, a town in Niger State, which shares close boundaries with Buari in the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. According to residents, the bandits who attacked on Tuesday killed one person and kidnapped nine others. Tuesday's attack was the fourth in a series of raids carried out by bandits in the community in less than a month. According to officials, the goal is to profile shanties and informal settlements that may have become a haven for criminal elements. Director of the Department of Development Control, Mukhtar Galadima, disclosed this on Wednesday during the removal of shanties and shops in Durumi 1. And according to him, the move is part of administration's broader strategies to enhance security and orderly development within the federal capital territory. Meanwhile, the Secretary Command and Control FCTA Department of Security Service, Dr. Peter Olumiji, said Durumi 1 is another notorious place uh, famed for upheavals. He said three people were arrested for being in possession of hard drugs and for obstructing the exercise. Okay, so FCT is being attacked only, almost on a daily basis by bandits. The federal capital territory, yeah, one of the reasons uh, the federal capital was moved from Lagos is oh, for security reasons, Focus, let, it, yeah. let it go to the center of the country and all that. And in the center of the country, we're finding this. So if Abuja is not safe, where else is it's safe? safe? Right. I mean, because this started from um, up north. We started from Bernou, mm -hmm. and you're hearing of you know all of these states that are being attacked. But I'm sure most times we think things are so far fetched. Like you think it's a, no, it's not going to. Me and mm. my household were covered by the blood mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, not my portion. Not my portion. Exactly. That's it. Not my portion. They would never see us. But then you don't realize that it's closer than you think. And so security is important. I cannot, you know, overemphasize this. The, the government needs to find a way to tame all of this because if Abuja, where is the center of the entire country, the capital of the country, and most of these politicians are there, that is where government, the government is, like Asorok is, that is where everything, you know, starts from before it now trickles down to the state government and local government. So if that is not safe, what does that tell us? Like, is there a possibility they, they, they would start to come to other states? Well, we're hoping that doesn't happen. There are so and many, I know they there, say we pray too much, but... <laughs> there are yeah. so many lawmakers who live in Abuja, but they don't live in their houses. They have their houses. Jacobin they live, lodges. Yeah, they have that, but they live uh, in, in very secure... Uh, hotels. Mm. There are people who have permanent rooms and yes. permanent uh, lodges in hotels and all that. Um, I, I, even if I, I can say, okay, they have the money to, uh, to get that, but what about the person who cannot go to that kind of a secure location? Mm -hmm. Now the next thing that is remaining is for them to kidnap people from Asso Rock because even all the lawmakers have been touched in one way or the other. Mm. Some of them have encountered these people and just were saved by uh, the bell, as it is, yeah. and all that. But, you know, people who are living in places where they cannot get this kind of protection, what happens to them? When the new IG came into office, he said he was feeling like a tiger, like feeling like a lion, <laughs> you, you know. Uh, he was their motekun in person, and that he was going to withdraw all the orderlies that were attached to to VIPs so that the police force will have a lot of people. He didn't do that. Every of them says that and they don't do it. So when we are lacking in personnel and you're still letting people go and take care of the VIPs, sometimes seven people, sometimes 10 people uh, from the police force for one VIP, then what happens to the rest of us? So when we're talking about security, recruitment is not just everything. Build confidence in the people to be able to give you uh, information, and then the people that are there, use them optimally, yeah. not using people, 10 policemen for one VIP, 10 <laughs> for another VIP. So how many will be left on the street to, to sure. secure us? So there are things that can be done, low-hanging fruits, but will they do it? The answer is well, almost we're, we're, definitely we're, no. We're, we're hoping, as usual, we're hoping that they do it. But I agree. Like, why do why do VIPs have so many? You I know, mean, the, there are men? private security firms that you can that, say, okay, exactly, let's train them. Let anybody who needs a, a guard or something uh, be 
uh, go there and get their services. Maybe if you must give one, give one. But some of these people move with an entourage. This, of yes, them. like a convoy. It's They're moving with like two, three vehicles. Maybe there's one in front. There are two, uh, two um, vans at the back. Police all inside. mobile police. And when they come down, one has to come and open the door for them. Mm -hmm. One has to, you know, hold the bag of a madame. <laughs> you know, why, why are we doing this? And at the end of the day, Aside, aside the fact that you know we're not utilizing them, I'm like, how do their lives? How do the police men and women? How do their lives just? How is their life just about that? I just have to open the door, follow somebody, hold their bag, Someone and that's it. To Someone hold, who has gone for training. You should be alert, and you should be, you know, mindful of the fact that if anything comes, maybe you need to draw your gun or something to protect the, your principal. You're holding bag. So I, I saw a video uh, some time ago where. Uh, the, the, the policeman had to hold the plate while the madam, <laughs> madam takes food mm. into the plate, you know, hold the plate. A policeman, uh, I, I mean, what, what kind of thing is that? Mm. So when we're thinking about security, we should think about the orientation of the entire security architecture. Yeah. They need to know what their, their jobs are and mm -hmm. then remove them from the VIP as you have always promised every single IGP. Peter comes, um, yes, says, says that, that, but he never, they, never, they never do that. They never just you know, follow through. Anyways, um, we, let's take our quote of the day. We're supposed to take that earlier on, but let's just take it now and you know, just move this on a light note. There's no shortage of remarkable ideas. What's missing is the will to execute them. And that is by Seth Godin. Yeah. Beautiful, we It's said. so beautiful. beautiful uh, the, the ideas are there, the will to execute them. It's just like we were talking, that we have laws, but the execution is the, is problem. the problem. So it's not like, you know, you want to always go and find the ideas. The ideas are, are there, there, but how are we implementing these yeah. ideas? And it's also, uh, as we started out this year, we were talking about how to build your 2024 to make it count even mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. And uh, procrastination is one of those things. Yeah. You have the ideas there, but you don't want to do There's them. The will you to you do want them, to, to you know, there is time for this, mm -hmm. there's time for that. But then time is moving. The time is moving, it's not <laughs> waiting for you. Time is moving. And if you're having a near-death experience, uh, the thing you regret is not the things that you have done. You regret the things you, you left undone. Done. So uh, if, you, if you don't want to have regrets at the end of your life, do the things that you are set out to do. Do the things that come to your mind. At least yeah. try your best to do, them. to do them. Because some of these ones that you regret about are the ones that you had the opportunity to do what you didn't do. Yeah. It's not all the crazy things you have done already, but mm -hmm. what you failed to do yeah. is what you regret. Oh. And you know the beautiful thing about ideas is, um, I, li I like to say this, God doesn't just give you an idea. Most times, you, do you realize that maybe when you're thinking of something, you, someone else is not doing the thing? Mm -hmm. You're already attracted to saying like, oh, someone, has, someone is doing this exact same thing mm -hmm. I'm thinking about. So the idea is not just for you. It's who runs with it first. Mm -hmm. So you have to, as long as an idea is deposited in you, um, you have to start to run with it. So the ideas are not, there's no shortage of it. We're not lacking the ideas. Even in Nigeria, we're so super smart and talented and we have amazing ideas. But then, how do we start to execute them? And exec in executing those ideas is actually what makes you flourish, is what makes you thrive, is what makes you, you know, just become a better citizen for Nigeria, for your family, for your friends. So it's important that, you know, we start to execute them. Get the will. Even, even if you do, even you're like, Ugh. Let me procrastinate. No, that's where the will comes in, the zeal to say, these ideas, I'm going to follow them through and, you know, just become Nobody better. can ever kill an idea whose time has come. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, one of the uh, unfortunately, we're not using that as the quote of the day today, yeah. but an idea is more powerful than, than any, more powerful than anything you can think in the physical. Yeah. Once it's an idea or an ideology, it becomes very, very powerful. So let's chew on that as we take this short break. And when we return, we'll be looking at the papers. Stay with us.